Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad my last video didn't scare you off. But unfortunately for you, today we're not telling a happy story. I'm going to tell you the story of a powerful man here in England. This is a man who had so much power within his hands, he could simply give you a little tap on the wrist or he could simply deport you to the new world or if you were lucky <laughs> maybe he might introduce you to the hangman and then you'll not be introduced to anybody afterwards who am i talking about here who is this man with so much power well this is the hanging judge and you want to know his name he is judge George Jeffries, the hanging judge. And you best pronounce his name correctly and don't forget to call him judge because if this man is insulted by you or if you go into his courtroom thinking that you're a bit arrogant, <laughs> there's a good chance you'll end up on the gallows. So let's get this story started about our good friend Mr. George Jeffries. Dorchester is a beautiful English market town with a very rich and varied past. Its history is linked to one of England's most notorious judges. Who's this judge? Well, you remember Judge George Jeffries, the hanging judge. And the scenes of his many trials can be experienced if you visit the place today. Judge George Jeffries, he was born in 1648 on the family estate of Acton Hall in Wrexham, and this is in Northern Wales. He was the sixth son of John and Margaret Jeffries. Now he was educated at the Fine Institute of Cambridge. He was appointed Solicitor General to the Duke of York, such a prestigious position, and was knighted in 1688. Now he became record for London in 1678, and at the age of 33, just 33, he became Lord Chief Justice of England and the Privy Council, later becoming Lord Chancellor. And in 1683, he became Baron, yes, Baron Jeffreys. In 1685, Judge Jeffreys comes to Dorchester and he stays in High West Street. It was built in the early 17th century and is one of the few timber frame buildings to survive Dorchester's disastrous town fires. It was here that he sat for the trials of the supporters of the Duke of Monmouth and his failed rebellion against our great King James II. The bloody assizes were held in the Oak Room of the Antelope Hotel on the 5th day of September 1685. Now these great assizes were created by our previous King Henry II where he would send his judges all around the country presiding over local cases. Now our judge, Judge Jeffreys, he had a secret passageway from his lodgings at the Oak Room. Now Jeffreys, he didn't believe in half measures and punishments such as hanging, transportation and whipping were often commonplace within his courtroom. Judge Jeffreys headed up the investigative team and became known as the Hanging Judge and this was because of the punishments that he had handed out to the supporters of the Duke of Monmouth. Now in Dorset a total of 74 people were condemned to be hung drawn and quartered, with their heads being displayed on spikes outside St. Peter's Church, which was opposite the judge's lodgings. Very gruesome. Now, 175 of Monmouth supporters were transported abroad, and only 29 were pardoned. 
Now executions were also carried out in towns and villages in the surrounding areas and Monmouth himself suffered a gruesome death when he was beheaded on Tower Hill in London on the 15th of July 1685. Following what we know as the glorious revolution of 1688, King James II, the Catholic King, he fled to France and Judge Jeffreys was the only high legal authority in James's abandoned kingdom and he was the only one left to perform the political duties. So when the armies of future King William approached London, Jeffreys attempted to flee the country disguised as a sailor. He was captured in a public house and he was recognised by the survivor of one of his trials. Now Jeffreys was sent to the Tower of London for his own safety of course, where he actually died in April 18th, 1689 at the age of 44. Guess what? Kidney failure kidney disease. Now a lot of people think that this kidney problem might have been the reason he got a bad reputation because it made him a grumpy man. He was originally buried in the Royal Chapel of St Peter and this was at the Tower of London. But in 1692 his body was moved to St Mary's Aldermanbury which was destroyed along with any trace of Jeffrey's grave in 1941 in the German air raids. Judge Jeffreys attended many of his own hangings and it is said that his ghost haunts several West Country locations as well as his own home in Walton on Thames. So there we are everybody, thank you for watching this video on The Hanging Judge, George Jeffries. Now if you like this type of video, please like, subscribe and put some comments in the box below. And as always, have a good night everybody, keep an eye out for danger and always watch your back. Ha 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 ha!